at Drew Pritchard's architectural showroom in Conwy, North Wales. The team is restoring the latest salvage items. And Drew's off to visit a collector who's just turned his passion into a business. Oh, we've got chocolate. Oh, oh we've got chocolate. There's, there's... I, so, I think it's been in the heat. Don't touch the bananas. <laughs> oh, dear. How long do I have to sit in a van with you? I'm going to drive slowly on purpose. It's a 120-mile drive east to the outskirts of Ashbourne in Derbyshire, to the southern edge of the Peak District. We are in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> right? In Derbyshire. I don't actually know particularly where we were. We just got a postcode. Um, we're off to see uh, Bob and Vic Clark. We've been to a few uh, prop houses, and uh, this one is, well, it's different. Because the collection is so vast, his daughter, Victoria, has decided that they're going to set up a prop hire business called Posh Props. Okay. Posh Props is run by father and daughter, Bob and Victoria Clark. I started when I was, as a child, just collecting things. Science Museum in Birmingham when I was a child. Uh, school when I wasn't allowed to play in the printing shop. So I've got my own printing shop now. Uh, that's how it came about, collecting things that people always told me when I was younger I couldn't have. Victoria took up her father's love of antiques as a child. And eight months ago, she decided to make use of Bob's eclectic collection. I've decided to start up a business called Posh Props and um, start hiring out to film and television companies. I haven't seen a road sign for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, if the sat by lab is correct, this is, this is it. the place. This is nice. Yeah. Very nice. Victoria? Yes, please meet you. How are you? How are you doing? Hi. Bob? Yep. Hi. Hello, Joe. Hello, mate. Hello, Bob. Hello. Hello. What a fab place. Mm. Couldn't be much quieter, could it? Nope. Can you hear anything? Yeah, very peaceful. It's very peaceful. Yeah, yeah plenty of bird song. Lovely. We're about to shatter the peace. Though. Yes, we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Come on, doggy. This is the shed. Anything you can carry, you can keep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, who's this, this then? Immediately, Drew spots an early 20th century steamroller. How long have you had this? Oh, about 15 years. When's the last time you fired it up? Oh, about six years ago when the wife died. That was it. Really? Not, no, it since. not interested now. They take an awful lot of time, don't they, these things up? Well, you've got to be dedicated just to doing one job, and this place has got many dedications. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's nice as well. Yeah, Phil Marshall, series one. Had that about 40 years, that. Very original. Yeah, don't mess with it. Run it on its old tyres, look better than putting new tyres on. That's it. Original paint, original dents, that's what I that's prefer. Yeah. yeah, you start it with a cartridge. You bang it and the, the cartridge fires it over. Right. Then you shut the valve at the bottom. We could do one then for Drew some mornings. Yeah. Get him out of bed. <laughs> yeah. <Shotgun. laughs> So what have we got in here then? Uh, basically, this is the Evil Engineering Shed. This is. So these these are my sort of thing. Yeah. Just the right height. Norton. I don't know who the, who the, who the casters of them would, would have been. They're super. Good. That's my type of thing. Dirty and heavy. Big and heavy. They're not as heavy as some of them. These Norton cast iron bench ends were made in the mid 20th century. With a tabletop added to them, they could be converted into a stylish kitchen table and are worth around £900. We go through to a section of the building uh, just past the diesel tractor and there's a pair of bench ends right on my right-hand side now. But I've only just walked into the building. I've only been with the guys a few minutes. I don't want to instantly start hitting them up and saying, do you want to sell that, do you want to sell that? It's uncomfortable and it's rude. 
and also I'm having too much fun looking at the collection. This lay there was second hand in 1886 it was, the country <laughs> the firm we bought it off. <laughs> so everything in here is sort of English, British, heavy engineering? That's right, this is, yes, this is all, 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 all heavy engineering from the early 1900s, late 1800s. We can't ignore this either. <laughs> that, that's my Black & Decker, that is. <laughs> Bench drill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How big a hole do you need to drill? Well, you can drill two inches easily with that, you can. <laughs> that would kill the van in one go, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Finished. It's a great collection. Really interesting. Really interesting. Right. It's quite astonishing what he's done here, really. So a lot of people, this will, they'll go, well, it's just a load of old stuff. It's not. This is our industrial heritage at its rawest form. This is when Britain was the workshop of the world, particularly the Midlands. Um, and this is heavy engineering. This is not to be messed about with. If you want to get into collecting this, you need space and an awful lot of time and a lot of know-how. Let's just come through here. That's all the um, knitting machines and looms. Oh, and so blimey. Who these all came out of one factory, these. Who um, uses these? They're just there, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Sock knitters, these all are, you know, yeah? They're what? Sock knitters. Sock knitters. Yeah. <laughs> it was at the local sock knitting factory shut down. That's my new favourite word, sock, sock knitters. knitters. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> For me, to be able to do this and come to a collection which... This isn't open to the public. You can't just wander in here. Uh, it's his personal collection. He's done it for his own reasons, and they're the best collections. Single owner, single-minded. That stool down there, do you know I spoke about the stools with this? Did it yes. come with any other stools? This one? Yeah. Did that come from the factory? It came from the same factory, yes. The strange thing is, I bought the chair that matches this in Bath about ten days ago. Have you still got it? Yes. That's double the price, then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I think the seat's been changed, actually. Have a look. I think it's had a different... Yeah. Yeah, it has. Different yeah. dolls, yeah. But still, it's charming, isn't it? I like the height of it as well. This 1950s industrial work stool has a circular hardwood seat and an unusual six metal blade base. With minor repair, it could fetch around £400. Yeah, that's quite nice. Would that be for sale? Uh, I wouldn't... That wouldn't be bothered if you have it, if you're you want. You're not bothered? Yeah, what, you would, you like? the other. what would you like for it? Well, you'd have to decide what you're going to bid me for it. 60 quid. Uh, that'll be OK. Deal. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you go. Was that all right? Yeah, that's absolutely That's part fine. of the prop yeah. I'm leaving. Yeah, no, that's you OK. Sure? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. See, I've been under instructions to sell you things. Yeah. I've been under instructions to myself to sell you nothing. <laughs> 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 well, you asked me about yeah. those two cast irons up there. I did. I did see the two cast iron yeah. table, so, table yeah. saw. Yeah. But it's Sports. not so, they're just, they're just workshop... Just workshop tables? Just workshop ends. What money would they be? I don't know, you'd have to tell me. I generally pay for those about £150 a pair. A pair, OK. Deal? Yep, thank you. Thank you very much. That's the sort of thing I like. Is it? Yeah. So where we got into this one, then? Yeah. OK, so what's this, this area, then? Well, it's an awe vehicle area, this is. OK. This is good. So you drag it like that. They've frozen those casters, haven't they? But... Mm. Like you can push it under the car, you see. <laughs> Never seen one of those. That come out of a farm sale about, oh, I don't know how many years ago. I hate to think. This cast iron tripod stand would have been used as a mechanic's lamp in the early 20th century. With a new spotlight added to it, it could fetch around £600. What's that worth to you? You is tell it, me. Is it to go? It can go, that's what I said, yeah. I think with the brake, is, that is an issue, even though it's an old one. Um, it'd be 40 quid. Can we have 50? Yeah. Not going to argue over a tenner with you. OK. I spotted this when I walked into the building. <laughs> really? I had to buy the farm to get that, I did. I had it written in the contract that I couldn't take it away. That's an absolute gem. That size was normally used in the wash air for brewing local beer. No what way. do you think it's worth? What do I think it's worth? Yeah. I've got a clue. Do you know what? I'd pay for it, I if it was for sale. I, 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 if it was for sale. I, I bought it with the forest, I don't know how much it cost. I'd pay you today £1,000 for it. I've got troughs out there with the same type of thing, mm. big stone troughs. Yeah. But it, it's not for sale. It's been pro well, it's not a pride and joy, it's not just a thing, is it? But, you know, things aren't for Some things you don't want to I've, sell. I've, I've, I've seen slight, a slightly bigger one, but it was dished and more flat. Yes. 
whereas um, that's an absolute belter. It's beautiful. And as soon as you see it, you want to walk up to it and touch it. You could plant that, you could put a water feature in that, or you could just pile logs into it, do, fill it full of kids' toys, whatever you do with that. It's a beautiful object. Yeah, I've sold you things today. I know. I know you have. I'm surprised, to be honest. A cup of patty's different enough for sale. <sighs> 1,500 quid. Top salvager Drew Pritchard is in Derbyshire, looking through Bob and Victoria Clark's collection of industrial antiques. He's keen to buy a rare 19th century copper pot. God, look at that colour. You couldn't make that up. It's not for sale. But can his bid of £1,500 tempt Bob? That's a belter. What a thing. Stop, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can't help you. Bob is an immovable object. I'm not going to get this today. Where's next then? Um, through What's to this? Cooperage. Cooperage. Yeah. Tea. Yeah. They're just the tools. Oh, lovely. Look at those. Look at that. That's lovely, isn't it? Um, this is for doing the staves on. That lies on the lies What's that? What does that do? The staves. These. Right. The planks. Yeah. So you, obviously you can't plane something that long, so you, you bring it down, you do the stave, you hold, you hold the wood. Right. And that stays stationary. And that's for doing the lips on the barrels. I've seen this tea. That yeah. tea. That's a plane. Most people have to put collections together to show to the public to make money. Bob couldn't give a monkeys about making money. He's just doing it for himself. So you've got these engines, these Rolls Royce? Uh, th that's Rolls jet engine. Yeah. Uh, it's an Avon. Uh, uh, What's that one? And it's an Alvis. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Nine, nine cylinder radial engine. Nine cylinder? Nine cylinders, yes. That's unusual. Where'd these tables come out of? Uh, uh, they're out of a library, the tables are. How many have you got? Uh, just a pair. Just a pair? Yeah. Hmm. These Victorian oak tables came from a library in Leicestershire and date back to the turn of the 19th century. With restoration to the wood, they could fetch around £1,500 each. Are they part of the collection? Yeah, they're Vickies. Yeah. What would you want for the pair? Um, what sort of money do you think? Um, the condition's not great, mm -hmm. particularly on that one but they're good tables. And I'm always trying to find decent tables. It's the trick is just getting your leg underneath so you can, people can use them that's as a right, dining yes. table, that's all. And you can just about do it with these ones. You can maybe put a little, little lifter underneath. One thing I'm always buying, bread and butter things really, but they're getting harder to find, are good, family-sized, refectory-type tables, kitchen tables. Everybody wants one, have a few kids, they need a big old table in the kitchen. I'm tempted to say £800 for the pair. £400 each. I reckon I've got 400 quid to spend on each. So I'll be 800 quid. Well, they'll bleach all the marks out on the top and re polish them, won't they? Well, we could, that's, the, that's, the, that's the easy bit. That's the easy bit. It's just get, the, when they've pulled apart here, that there, that's the only pain, and that one. So you have to take the tops off. Yes. And I can't do that, so I'm going to have to pay Alex to do that. Would you do eight and a quarter? 8.25? Yes, okay. I will. Thank you. You'd never okay. pushed him up and off there, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> next time. Next, next time. time. Next time. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Oh, we're going into that. Um, what's it room there? Okay. Loving all these bikes. Super bikes. Cool. Now these I do like. I like the Valiset. You used to have to eat breakfast off these, Drew. Right? Yeah. When I was a kid. Our, our kitchen was full of these. Max yeah. and International Nortons on I'd the kitchen table. I'd have liked to live in your dad's house. It was... There was some stuff there. My there mother really fell was. out with me. She went to Wales one weekend and I got my biking bits on the kitchen table and I, I, I was balling my chain in her best saucepan when she came <laughs> home and caught me. <laughs> Did you ride any of these? Uh, yes, I've ridden them all, but I'm not going to ride them again. Yeah. What's something like that worth today? It tells me £1,200, but I wouldn't have to give more, no more than £1,000 for it. I know we're talking the wrong way, but that's all it's worth. Is that what it's worth now? That's all I think it's worth, anyway. But it's a r really good original one, isn't it? Yes. For your size as well. Well, do you know, I think these lightweight bikes have got a little bit of more charm, because this was just your basic commuter bike. You went bike. to work on that. That was it, yeah. Yeah. It was just, I want to get to work as cheap as I possibly can. Super. That's a very original one. 
Because you usually they were hammered, weren't they? Oh. You know, cut to bits, thrashed around. So, where's next? Uh, we just go down the middle row. Down the middle, middle one. Okay. Yeah. This is great. I can't, this, it, I can't tell you what a good time I've been. <laughs> it's just seeing all this stuff. So how long has it taken to put this collection together, then? Three weeks. Three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you, Bob. I think you're telling me porky. Did you have a week off in that as well? And with the shopping trip completed, it's time to load up the van. Right, come on. Chop, chop. <laughs> We're having a hard day, chop, chop, chop. What Bob's done is put a collection together that I've not really seen the like of before. The things I bought today, I'm actually really pleased with all of it. Victoria, if you, if you ever want a job, yeah. seriously, I need, you know, <laughs> you made that look easy. 1978, <laughs> he did some work. I've, I've, I've overworked my back, that's why I can't do anything. I can't, can't move anything. Strange table, isn't it? Because it's had a thing all the way around it. Yeah. Okay. Drew seems really enthused with everything that we've got, and um, yeah, really pleased with what we've sold, and got what I feel good money. It's quite bright in different fields. He just doesn't go down one line. He's got very many lines in his mind, he has. And he knows where the modern market's at. Where I don't know that, and I don't even try to learn it. Bob, a pleasure. Thanks, Drew. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to meet you. you. And to you guys. And to you guys. Thank you. Cheers. If you make a profit, we share it with me then. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. Uh, I'll share it with the bank and all the staff before yeah. me and you see any. That's yeah, sure. well, a bit on left then. Exactly. <laughs> but no, thank you so much and good luck with the business. Brilliant. All right. Thank you. Okay, Cheers. Oh. Oh. Ow. My back. Oh. You right? Yeah. I really enjoyed today. Great, wasn't it? Superb. When was what a top bloke. But when was the last time we saw so many different items? That at that stand. Yeah. There was just so many different things. Fascinating. And wasn't it great? Oh, well, Victoria as well. You know? Yes, yeah. she was. She's got, she's got a job on her hands, hasn't she? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blimey. Try and catalogue that one. Well, she's got to pin him down long enough to get all that information out of him, write it down, photograph it, measure it, and get it on a website. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that huge drill. Yeah. Just vast. I mean, that's going to be at least four gaps worth of moving that. <laughs> Not even one are we, gav are we, are we, are we unit, one. Are we using gav as a unit of measurement? Uh, yeah, of, of strength. Six gavs. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's a unit of measurement, a gav. Back in Conway, Drew is eager to show Rebecca and the team the latest purchases. Hello, hello. Come, Come on. on. Uh, Come on. Uh, Matching chair. Yes. What's up, Ken? Never seen one before, now I've got two. Bizarre. That's a mad... <laughs> what coincidence? I know. Blade. Yeah. Look at these. They're nice. They're exactly the right height to make a kitchen table out of. Lovely. But we need these off next. A pair of matching oak library tables. They're all coming apart, though, again. All the legs are loose. But they're oak, they're completely untouched, and they're the same size. Fantastic. Mm. Fab, refectory tables. I mean, OK, the planks are split at the moment, but everything can be restored. So that's great. That's fantastic, actually. I want them on the website within three days, Max. So get Carl on there, onto some of them, and Alex onto the rest of it. With no time to lose, Alex starts restoring the library tables. Third, he reinforces the loose planks. Then the tabletop is put back in place and sand it down. So we've got a nice smooth surface now, it's nice and dry, so we just put a clear wax on now and it just gives it a very sort of subtle sheen. It darkens initially and then it'll lighten up. Feels good, it looks good, perfect. Soon they're ready for a Larry to photograph. started work on the cast iron venture. He scours the surface to remove crusted infections. Next, he 
apply the fine metal pot. When that's dry, the guys install a wooden tabletop. Then drill in new support. And the new table is finished and ready for drink to inspect. Ah, perfect. Excellent job. Really nice. In fact, it sold in less than 24 hours, and it's now going to be used as fashion retail um, in Australia. So it's going to have jumpers and jeans all over it. So there you go, straight away from a, a barn in the middle of nowhere to Australia. The next day, Drew's off again. This time with friend and colleague from the antiques trade, Rob Black. It's a 130 mile drive south to Worcestershire. We're off to see Steve Warrillow at Holt Castle. A castle. What a, a, pro proper, proper, a proper castle. castle. Proper, really? proper knights packing lumps off each other. Castle. Oh, cool. Holt Castle was originally built in the 11th century as a fortress to prevent the Welsh from invading England. Over the years, the structure has been altered many times and in the 13th century was converted into a manor house. Steve Warrillow bought the estate in 1996 and is making good use of his massive property. Currently we use it as a family home and uh, mixed in with a little bit of business doing weddings and conferencing. The benefit of living in an old, large property, you can pick up the most bizarre things which wouldn't fit into the normal house. So you, you start to slowly acquire um, all manner of objects. The reason we're here anyway, it's just a standard house call. The guy who bought it, Steve, he bought it and there's nothing in it. At all. Right. Right, nothing. So, so there's, there's no residual furniture there? Nothing. He's been out and bought all that himself. 18 bedroom. Whoa. 18 bedrooms. So this could be, that's the place. A very small van for the job. Yes. Yeah. It could be a massive haul of stuff. You just don't know, do you? No. That's why I love house calls, you just don't know what you're going to get. There you go, look at that. Check that wow, out. That's fantastic. Ah, so it's a bit of a castle, isn't it? It's a bit more than I've got. <laughs> yeah. That's a really lovely house, isn't it? Mm, I like it. This is our man. Morning. Hello there. Steve. Yes. Drew. Drew, how are you doing? Pleased to meet you. And you. What a place. Yes. Yeah. Lovely day as well. Yeah, yeah, We've gorgeous. Hello, I'm Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi. You good? Where do we start? Inside. Please. OK, follow me. Into the castle. Yeah, we'll go through the main tower entrance doors. And just step there, Robert. So this is the original entrance to the tower. Um, and if you've been in invaded, we've got these three holes in the ceiling with uh, hot oil poured down on top of the uh, people coming into the castle, so... That's not a good day, is it? Wouldn't be a good day for them, would it? No. That's quite a chimney piece, isn't it? Yes, yeah. We, we don't use it too often, because this is one of the function rooms for the weddings, and um, we've got our own private rooms uh, at the far end of the property. So, Belletian moulded, I'm trying to... Uh, fossil marble. Nice to see all the fossils there. So where have you been buying all your kit from then, all your furniture? Yeah, well, back in 96 when we first came here, we were obviously desperate for a few bits and pieces. Um, this was our first UK house, so we hadn't got any furniture to bring into it. So we just popped to sort of local uh, auction houses and Pick anything which took the fancy. So this is a starter home. What are you going on to next? <laughs> <laughs> it surprised me when he said this was their first sort of real home. You know, most people get a, a one-bedroom bungalow or something, but uh, an 18-bedroom castle is pretty impressive. OK, so lovely cantilever staircase. Uh, nice tapestry. Was, the, the, was the roof sort of intact when you bought the place? Yeah, I mean, the roof's uh, very, very good, but we have a twice-yearly uh, inspection oh. just to put uh, drop slates and things back, back into place. OK, so where are we off to next? Uh, I'll show you a couple of the bedrooms. Th this way? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah we just left. Yes, this is the uh, Bromley Suite, and I believe the bed and the wardrobe, which is a matching set, was produced for a wedding day. Um, so it's a wedding bed and the suite. It's Dutch, is it? I'm not sure of the origin.
Right, next one. Okay, right. Well, I think there's me. plenty we'll of rooms to see, room. isn't there? We'll use this room as a bottle suite for the weddings as well. It's taken some work, hasn't it, to do all yeah. this? We had all this produced, actually, by a cabinet maker that um, we get on well with. Mm. So all this is comparatively new, sort of 97, 98, mm. the whole suite. What I'm seeing throughout the house is very good quality, but reproduction furniture. Reproduction is a slightly unkind, actually, description of what's in here. But it's new, and I don't do new furniture. So, yes, we're, we're moving up here to the, the games room. Oh, that sounds good. What yeah. have you got? A footy table. Have you refinished it? No, we haven't. I'm, I'm not sure uh, pre previous owners, but that's as we purchased it. I quite Hasn't, like it. Yeah. I quite like it. I'm just not sure about the finish. This football table with original paint and cast alloy figures would have been made in the 1950s. With minor restoration, it could sell for around £3,000. Did you pay a lot for it? Yeah, I paid three and a half. There's nowhere left for me to go on that one, I'm afraid. Yeah. That will have to stay where it is. I'm not even going to bid him. It'd be too rude to offer him 1500 when he's paid that much for it. It's not looking good. So far, everything at Holt Castle is too expensive or too modern. So this is the solar room. So mostly everything's new in here. This trip is going to be a financial write-off if there's nothing to buy. OK, so nothing in here, so Venture let's on. go on. OK, guys. Oh, right. that's nice, it's, isn't uh, it? Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. I'll show you through to the Rose Garden area, which is um, okay. trimmed well, by some incredibly I have to large... say, I do like the look of that, though. You like that? Yeah, where did you get that from? I think we acquired that when we bought property next door. Um, okay. Which we sold two or three years ago. Okay. It was one of the options we bought. So there's another one there. Did that come with it? It would have done, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I quite like. Are those are those to go? Yes. Those are, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can pick it up, you can uh, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a light veining to it, but not much. It's quite nice, that isn't it, Rob? I do like that. Yeah. These urns are currently being used as garden ornaments but they're 19th century white marble wine coolers. With extensive cleaning, they could be worth around £1,500. It's got a very active ant's nest. <laughs> I don't know, what would you take for the pair? I feel guilty about dehousing the ants, but that would have to happen. Oh, so we're open to offers. Open um, to offers. I couldn't really put a value on them myself. Um, so. 250 $250 for the pair? Ace salvager Drew Pritchard is at Holt Castle in Worcestershire with owner Steve Warrell. So far, the trip has not been a success as the furniture is too modern. So mostly everything is new in here. That's a shame, isn't it? But he's just spotted these two urns in the garden. Two fifty. Is his bid enough to tempt Steve to part with them? I think that's about right. That yeah. one's got a crack in it. Gives us a working. There's no work to do. Yeah. Um, okay, but well, it gives us can, a working profit. We can do a deal on that. Yeah. 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 Happy? Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Hold it. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have those. They're nice and heavy. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well they're alright, aren't they? they? Look quite nice. Quite like the look of these two. Yeah. I should imagine you bought these new, did you? Uh, yes, yeah, we bought all those new. They've weathered and coloured in the Are they to go? Yeah, happy to sell those. They're just a good colour. Mm -hmm. No age them at all. They're just very stylish. Yeah, yeah. This pair of 1950s green garden benches are made of teak and are replicas based on an original design by architect Sir Edward Lutyens. With cleaning and polishing, they're worth about £1,500. Hmm. What would you like for the pair, the, the two, uh, this, this shape? 120 For the pair? Should I said 240? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> That's a bit of a steal for us, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Being honest with you. Um, 250, do you think? 
Yeah. It's it, it's 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 cheap, but they are what they are. Well, it's very kind. I'm more than, I can, I can, more than happy to accept yeah, two fifty for the two. Are you sure? Yeah, Great, yeah. Thanks. It's fine. a it's a yeah. deal for us, obviously. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Some people see, see things differently, don't they? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. Happy days. I just think they're they're a great design and they're a good colour. Excellent. Great, there you go. Two more. Good. They're not heavy, Rob. You well, can you, you say can, that. We can... <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Colour is great. Just the patina. That's it. It's just the colour. They look great. Classy, stylish and cool. And <laughs> fun. <laughs> go straight on. Hilarious. Yep. The knowledge base that uh, Drew and uh, Rob have got is just incredible. Drew started picking and sort of looking at items which we really thought had got little value, and um, he seemed to be delighted. And we're certainly happy with the offers. Uh, that's certainly fair. Um, so just, just incredible. We did manage to find a few things, and strangely, two of them were in an adjoining property. And when that was sold, they returned here, which are the two marble wine coolers. I don't actually think Steve likes them very much either. That's why they're outside, chucked out in the garden. I like them. I think they're very, very beautiful, classy, stylish, different. They're a good find, and uh, they'll certainly go to a good home, that's for sure. <laughs> Steve, thank you. A pleasure. Cheers. Well done, Drew. Good luck with the house. Yeah, thank you good very much. to meet you. Good Fantastic you place. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for clearing some of the junk. That's junk. Really <laughs> <laughs> Give us a shout if you find any more of that type of junk. Oh, we'll do. We'll All do. right. Thank you. A very interesting house. I'd like to spend a night there. See what I did, castle, night. That was very good, Rob. It just came to me. You thought a nice bloke? He, he was, wasn't he? I liked him. Nice and easy going. The strange thing was, he really didn't like anything that we picked. I know, it's bizarre, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I love, absolutely love those cisterns. They're just beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Once you got them out, then you went nice around the front things. and tipped them out, I thought. Oh, they're better than I thought. Yeah. The next day, they drive 140 miles southeast to Lewisham in London. Let's see, there's just good architecture around some, some very big, grand houses here. There are, which yeah. would have had very grand Victorian things. Every Georgian house has got a Georgian fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> We're going to Aladdin's cave to meet a girl called Kathy. Have you dealt with them before? I've not dealt with this lot before. I know her brothers are, have yep. been in and around the trade for years. So they're proper, proper old trade family. It's the lot. It's, it's all of them. My name's Kathy, and we have got an establishment called Aladdin's Cave, which is really a glorified second-hand yard but architectural salvage. Kathy started the business with her brother four years ago, but she got her first taste of the business at the age of six with her father. My father was what you'd call a rag and bone man, um, totter, but my mother would call him a general dealer. It's really a family history. It's something we've always known. And my son is also in the business. So it's quite um, an ongoing thing. I think it's just in our blood. Wow. <laughs> I think we're here. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Kathy. Drew. Hello. How are you doing, Drew? Very well. Nice, nice to, to meet you. Yeah, my How pleasure. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hello, Rob. Hello, Rob. I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi. Nice to meet Hello, you. Hello, Chris. Nice to meet you. Right. That's quite an office. Well, it certainly is. <laughs> Blimey. Is everything for here for sale as well? Absolutely everything. The only thing that's not for sale is, is. up there. We call them Marilyn. And yeah. also the clock, which we use. Oh, I see. Oh, OK, that's yeah. all right. We're always late anyway, so we don't yeah. need that. Well, you're in good company then. Yeah, I'm <laughs> always late. Are you always late? I'm it's part of the late trade. everywhere. I kick off 11. Mm -hmm. You have a nap about 1. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. It's probably an age thing. I'm only 28. I just work hard. <laughs> Aladdin's Cave, you know when people ring you up and say, I've got an Aladdin's Cave, generally, when we hear that in the office, you can go, all right, it's going to be a load of old tut, because it always is. But I've come in here, it's great. It's rammed. It's got, I only need to buy one thing. That's all, you know, if we find one thing, great. I like it. It's brilliant. It's old school, old school junk shop. House clearance, antique shop, bit of salvage, bit of everything. Love it. So I'm looking for really authentic stuff. Uh -huh. um, lighting, 
seating, furniture, garden. Right, OK. Lighting. That's what we're after. Lighting, big time. Lanterns, I see most of the lamps in here are, are new. You've got a couple of old open lines there. Um, OK, yeah. I think I've got 18 of the old industrial lights that came in last week. Oh, I um, see. They're missing their tops. Exactly. Yeah. Which... Which is a problem. Mm -hmm. We can only buy them if they're complete. Complete. Complete okay. and original ones. I, do you know what? I've hardly been down this area of London. Really? Hardly Not ever. That much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very you, Rob. That's clearance on well, Liber that's, Liberace's that's house. Chair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's you, God. isn't it? Yeah. Well, Definitely. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let, let me give you a hand up, Drew. So you can try it. Oh, very good. I know, he's great, isn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a wonderful piece. That's a games table. It's the most magnificent games table. It extends out. There's a roulette wheel inside. There's everything. There's backgammon. Yeah, it's really... Do you get a lot of the prop masters in here? Yes. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I should imagine every um, major production, there's so many that come here that tend to use this for a few years now, yeah. Mm, that's good But the one into. thing with them is they go, oh, don't tell my friends. Don't let them know where it's come from. You know, they're all like, oh, my <laughs> God, my friend found out about this. And they, you know, like to keep it secret themselves. And you're, th and you're thinking, don't keep it secret. Tell, tell everybody. Them, <laughs> <let> them know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, we'll just keep it between us and, exactly. you know, 50 other buyers. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That is a mountain of stuff. Everything I'm seeing, though, is just standard house, hotel and pub clearance stuff. But these places do turn up good gear. They do. It comes in off the street every day. But what I'd really like to find is a little bit of antique London. That would be nice. Right then, where's next? Um, should we go down towards the garden, the outside? Yes, please. Don't get to look up all the time, Drew. What, in case something drops on me? Of course, yeah. <laughs> maybe. What about this thing? Yeah, it's quite nice. It's in the top door. Is it? Uh, yeah. Which is a shame. That's all right, we'll just take that, take the, the see the head off that? Uh -huh. That just lifts off and yeah. just take it down, yeah. so it's a two section, yeah. isn't it? No marks on it. This mahogany bookcase was made circa 1900 by the American company Glock Vernica, which specialised in high-end elastic bookcases, so-called because units and shelves could be added to make different depths and heights. With major restoration, it could fetch around £700. Right. How much is that? Um, £800. That could be £160. £100 and how much? £160. Wow. Through Pritchard is a salvage yard in South East London, where he's found a Globe Vernica storage unit. What about this thing? But is the asking price from owner Cathy Kirby too high? That can be 160. 100 and how much? 160. Uh, yeah. It's quite cheap, isn't it? I love that. Thank you very right. much. You're yes. Surprise, surprise, we're in London, we're playing London prices. I would normally pick that up in the provinces for 60 to 80 quid. I'm paying 160 quid, twice the price. For a normal size one, I wouldn't do it. For a wide one like that, I will. That'll do. Watch that though, Rob, look. Yeah, just as that. coming off then, it's an old plate. So yeah, yeah, just in code. Wonderful done. Lovely. You got it's any more a, things like that? Um, that's the sort of thing. See, like that's an old of course, shop yeah. fittings. They tend to go very quickly, obviously. Yeah. Uh, unless they need work on them, like that one. Yeah, but okay. Maybe we'll get lucky and find something else. A few more else. bits. Yeah, I'm sure. Was there a shop on site when you bought the place? No, this was actually, uh, originally it's an old train station. Okay. This, as we go down towards the garden, it's a platform. No. Yeah. When did you last do a stock take? Uh, we do it <laughs> weekly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah, rather you than me. I absolutely love this place. It's exciting. I find it really exciting being out here because you just don't know what you're going to find. There's bits of brand new London and there's sort of 200-year-old bits of London out here. These look good. Which ones? These are underneath here. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Nice foliage. Oh, OK, a window. See what you mean? Yeah. Before I go dragging that out, it's not a lot of money, is it? Uh, that could be 140 quid. Oh, it is a lot of money. Not really. <laughs> Is it good value? Fantastic value. 
this early 19th century Georgian wrought iron panel with foliate design would have been used as part of a gate or railing. With very little restoration, it could fetch around 350 pounds. To be, to, I'd, I'd buy it. I'd, I'm a buyer at 100 quid, to be honest with you. Uh, I just don't, I, I, it just needs a bit too much work. It's mm -hmm. got a few bits missing. About 120. What about 110? Go on, you do. Thank you. Thank you. If you can get your boys to get that out, no though. Problem, if there's any more... Yeah, that's the... That's um, the sort of thing. If you, if there was, say, right, a larger okay, one of those, well, maybe... Yeah. What's that stuff there, Let's that cast iron there? Oh, yeah. Staircase rails, sections. What sort of money are these plain ones here, these ones? 300 quid. Hmm. Add a marble top to these 19th century cast iron balustrades and they could be turned into an elegant console table. As is, they're worth about £700. Oh, there's another one there as well. There's oh, two. There's another two. There's two okay. more ends on those. So what were you saying? They're 200 quid. No, I never did, I. <laughs> no, it was 150. <laughs> Um, right, OK, because yeah. we've just found the extra pieces... Yeah. Yeah, and you had your own way before, they can be 280, which is for nothing. They probably mean? stay on me in now. When did I have my own way? <laughs> when we went when, down When was the back? that? <laughs> when... Hey, steady. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're cheap for that. At the moment, the lads are just pulling out all those different panels. Once we've got them out, we can really have a good look at them. I've had that panel before, but these are a bit bigger, which is ideal console height. Very good, very happy. Drew, I think it's your lucky day. We found another four panels. OK. What do you think, Rob? So we've actually found another five panels, Rob, to match okay. five. But those what, four but the there. the most important bits are these, so we can make... There's right. two. Okay. There's one. There's another one. Mm -hmm. Now, these themselves, as a piece of railing, are interesting, and if you want a piece of railing, they're quite nice. But I'm looking at them. As soon as we found those little single return pieces, they're console tables. How much? Is they're seventy pound a panel. Do we deal for two eighty? Okay, sorry. Right. Okay, so uh, one twenty two forty three. Right. Okay, your own way, Drew. Three hundred quid, and you've absolutely stolen. I'd have asked a hell of a lot more money if I'd have had nine panels rather than five. Honestly, you know yourself. Okay. All right. All right. Yep. Fantastic. Sold. They're, yeah, they're great. Thank they're you. Wonderful. You've got to get them on the van, though. No problem. Oh. That's not a problem for us. Happy. What's that? Oh, it's music <laughs> to my ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not a problem. OK. Right, yeah, we'll have all those. It's been quite an experience. He found some nice metal work that he liked, so he really did get a good bargain. I hope to do business again with him. I could have done with buying a little bit more stuff, and the prices were, compared to what I usually pay, a lot more. But it's in front of me, it's right. I know what I can do with it. We're going to turn money on it. I've got to buy it. Happy? Right, we're done. We're all done. Thank you very all much. Loaded. Enjoyed oh, that. Wonderful. Nice yeah, gear. Me too. Thank you. Thanks, You've Drew. got my number. Definitely. Yeah. Great to meet you. <laughs> and you. Right. Thanks. See, Thanks, you. Rob. See you. Bye bye. Oh, another great day. That was awesome, wasn't it? It was. Wasn't that cheap, though? 850 quid. Yeah, it's never going to be cheap in London, though, is it? No. That's how it goes, isn't it? No. That is a little snapshot of real old London. Back at base. I'm over the moon. Absolutely fantastic. Drew's delighted to find out that one of his prized purchases has finally found a buyer. A few months ago, Drew spotted this chair at Kevin Marshall Antiques in Hull. See that thing down there? That sort of fairground horse's head? Is it alloy? No, do, you know what, do you know what it is? That, it's, that is a barber's chair from the 50s. A kid's barber's chair. Is so, it complete? Yeah, absolutely. You'd get your little kid on it, and to, so he, he would uh, sit and be good while he's getting his hair cut. Yeah. I've got a 
vague recollection of seeing something similar a long time ago, but the condition of that one's amazing. Black vinyl with the cast alloy and the original painted base in untouched condition and no damage and everything there. I mean, you can't really ask for more than that. But, much to his surprise, the chair sat in the showroom. The barber's chair should have sold instantly. It took over six months to sell, even after it was restored by Gavin to perfection. Until the owner of Beamhurst Museum in Staffordshire, John Walton, noticed it on the program. The infant's barber's chair is unique. You don't find them, so it will fit in here just like a glove. It will be home from home. Where are you going to see another one of those? It's at Beamer's Museum. The chair arrived yesterday and I cannot wait to unwrap it. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. One of the best buys for a long, long time. I mean, look at the details on it. It's so live. Better than what I thought it was going to be. It's ended up in a museum with somebody who absolutely loves it and they're extremely happy. So, some things you think are going to walk out the door the same day can take a while. You just don't know in this business.